During this session, I'm going to be talking about entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. This is the uh, set of rules which explains why a glass of water in front of you does not suddenly become frozen. So it's a law which describes why there's not suddenly extra order and organization in the world without us doing something about it. So let me take you through, I guess the best place to start would be is what is the second law of thermodynamics? Okay. The second law of thermodynamics states that heat can be completely converted into work in a single process, but continuous conversion of heat to work requires a cyclical process. Uh, or, and this is probably easier, not all thermal energy in a thermal system is available to do work. Both of these descriptions come up because if we try and create an engine which, let's say, uh, requires conversion of uh, heat energy to work energy, we find that we cannot do this perfectly efficiently. Okay. There's always some issues here. And some of that thermal energy is just not available to us to convert. Now, let me explain why that's the case. So this is the second law of thermodynamics, which we don't really work with in the IB physics program, but it's a starting point to think about things. I'm now going to introduce you to the term entropy. So entropy is a thermodynamic function of the state of the system and can be interpreted as the amount of order or disorder in a system. What does that mean? Well, what it means is we're talking about order and disorder. Uh, Look at my two pictures here. Okay. We're going to start off with a place which has very low entropy. So that means that there's a very low amount of disorder. And if things just naturally go about and you don't put any effort in, then what happens is the world turns to my picture on the right, which is a place where there is much disorder. Now that disorder, if I was to get to my new ordered state, would require lots of energy and input to tidy that up. So this idea of entropy is a measure of the order in a system. Okay. And naturally, things flow towards a disordered state. Let me give you another example here. If I think about the melting of ice, okay. it starts off with a, a very structured crystallized state. So there's minimum entropy and maximum order. As time goes by and this melting process takes place, then more naturally I get a puddle of water which has no structure and therefore maximum entropy and minimum order. And what we're saying here is that the world naturally processes towards a situation of maximum entropy and natural disorder. If I had a series of bricks and I threw them over a fence. It's most likely when I come to the other end that I'm going to find a messed up pile of bricks rather than a very ordered brick wall forming. The idea here is that the universe naturally changes into a state of increased maximum entropy. So the second law of thermodynamics can be put into these terms. Okay. The terms is that the total entropy of any system plus that of its environment increases as a result of all natural processes. So what we're saying here is that the sum of this uh, thermal energy is going to be always consumed into making the universe slightly more disordered. Now here, remember, we've got to be talking about uh, uh, a complete system. I know there's examples when entropy can be uh, decreased, but that always requires you putting some energy in and some effort in. And even if there's a situation where in a small place the entropy decreased, that'll be part of a larger picture, and in that larger picture overall the entropy would be, always be increasing. When we talk about this thing of any system, a system or an isolated system is where no material is transferred across the system boundaries, only heat and work are transferred to the system. So that kind of simplifies our situation and works much more effectively if we're thinking about uh, some of the thermodynamic processes we've discussed earlier.
So here's a question now. Think about what I've just said. A well-insulated container is divided into two equal volumes by a wall. In one half there's an ideal gas, in the other half there's a vacuum as shown. The wall is now removed. Which one of the following correctly gives the changes, if any, that takes place in the internal energy and the entropy of the gas? So what we're going to see here, think about which answer you're going to go for. Okay. The answer is actually going to be answer B. Okay. Internal energy stays the same. Okay. Why is that? Well, the internal energy is related to the average kinetic energy of all the molecules. It's a well insulated container, so therefore we're losing no heat at all. And that means the average kinetic energy of all the molecules is the same. Now the entropy, we're saying that the entropy here is going to change. We're saying that with that additional space there is more room for disorder, more room for the molecules to be spread around in different ways, so therefore the entropy has increased in that situation. Got one final example for you to try and get your head around this concept of entropy. Operating refrigerator with its door open is placed in a thermally insulated room. The refrigerator operates for a long period of time. Which of the following correctly gives the change in temperature and the entropy of the air in the room? Now think about this carefully. What's happening here? What's going to happen to the temperature? What's going to happen to the entropy? Well, in my enclosed system, two things are going to happen. First of all, the temperature is going to increase. Now, stop all those people saying, but if the fridge door is open, it's going to make the world colder. If you think about a refrigerator, it's a machine which is doing work using a cyclical process. And what we have here is that although the inside is getting colder, uh, we also have on the back of a refrigerator, there's often a filament which is reduce, releasing heat there. So that means that Although there's more order inside the fridge, uh, the overall state of the system is the fact that the temperature is going to increase. So work is being done here, and that means that well, there's going to be some residual heat added to this whole situation. So the temperature is going to increase. With the temperature increasing, in this situation, it is still, we highlight, uh, looking at the whole system which includes outside the refrigerator and the whole room. Although it's thermally insulated, the room is going to uh, increase its entropy because of that natural process. Now remember the reason why this temperature is increasing overall is because we're uh, doing some work to the system. Remember we've got it plugged into the wall so there's some electrical energy which is uh, doing some work to the system. So that's entropy. There's a lot of subtleties to this idea, and um, it may take a bit of additional reading to get your head around it, but it's a very useful tool when we consider the processes of the universe as a whole.